All right. Uh, Logan, were you born deaf? Yes, I was born deaf. All right. With half of a co cochlea. Yes, cochlea. What's a cochlea? Um, you know, it's inside your ear. Like, it's like the hairy brown part. <laughs> You like you half of it. Like mine, I only had half instead of the full part. Like that was born that way. All right. Um, when? Sorry, do you have cochlear No, no. I'm against cochlears. I have hearing aids now. Um, why are you against? Well. Okay. Um. I don't like when the doctors suggest it to the parents. First thing they say is when the baby are born that things should get it cochlear. I think that it's wrong because, I mean, you don't know growing up, they don't know what their struggles are gonna be growing up with a cochlear implant. And it's really gonna screw them up. I mean, there's a high percent for depression, suicide, but, 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 um, I mean, I like, for example, if, like a person grew up and they allowed them to have an option of cochlear or hearing aids. That's fine. I accept that. It's their decision. It's their body. They should decide. But we sh other people should not force that individual to get a cochlear. I mean, really, I was lucky. I was almost cochlearized, but thank God my mom said, no, we're going to get hearing aids. I mean, so, and I'm really appreciative of that. I mean, I have one, I mean, I have, actually I have several friends with cochlears. I mean, they're, they're nice, they're friendly people, but really I respect, they respect deaf cultures, but some of them who have cochlears, they're not. They're not interested in deaf culture or community, ASL, none of that. They're cochlear, I mean, and, well, but the ones who have cochlears that like ASL, I mean, that's perfect. They, they like being in the community, but they don't understand how cochlear implants don't really help a lot. It, all you hear is sound and you rely on lip reading, but they, it's just, it's misunderstood, the whole situation. Yeah, really. When did you first uh, learn uh, did you first learn American Sign Language or a different sign? No. Um, I started learning ASL when I was in the ninth grade. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love it. I, and it's the social, the social aspect, the deaf people, a lot of funny stories we can be told using this language. Um, but I mean, just you keep learning, and I keep getting better and better. Um, I realized looking back, like I was thinking, wow, and growing up oral, it, it was tough for me. But I mean, some of them it was easy. Some deaf people it's easy, but me it wasn't. And like, but I have my family and my friends supporting me, and. Um, you know, I mean, I'm just completely fascinated with ASL. Well, I'm more PSE too, but like right now I'm learning more ASL grammar and structure and stuff like that, but PSE is where I'm at. All right. So is PSE signed English? Well, it's like signed English ASL together. There's five or six more people coming through. Okay. Okay, sorry. Okay, um, um, sign exact English and, okay, what I say? Okay, okay, ASL, okay. <laughs> it's like a combination, that's PSE. It's more like, it's ASL, but using English grammar order. It's not exact English, signing exact English, it's not that, but it's PSE. But for me, it's more like a lazy sign, so yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> in my opinion, there you go. <laughs> Do you have any? Go ahead. Okay, um, so for, we talked to Sandy, um, what's her last name? Busby. Busby, thank you. And uh, she was talking about the different uh, legislation that she's been trying to pass that goes along with um, requiring interpreters to have higher levels of certification. So if you had had an interpreter maybe in your school or things like that, do you think that would have helped you more? If you could just kind of expand your thoughts on raising that certification level. <laughs> sorry, hard questions, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine, that's good. Um, a lot of people have been asking me these questions lately. Um, 
first we were talking about, well, I'm trying to be more involved, but I've been really busy and I'm trying to support. But you got to understand that what I've heard from other people, well, seen, I guess you could say, when I grew up, we, I didn't have any problems. I had no interpreter until I was in high school. So, and my interpreter was fine with me. We got along. But then I realized, like, okay, when I was growing up, I had no issues. Like I thought the deaf was fine, everything was fine. But now, but now in here, like I'm realizing there's a lot of issues because I've been involved in the deaf culture and community and the family and stuff like that. I see the problems now. But I'm really concerned about deaf children and hard of hearing children. Like when the interpreters are um, like teaching signed exact English, it's, I mean, that's a problem. Uh, we want them to become ASL users. And I mean, they're deaf, the kids, the, the, it helps with their visual understanding, their visual language more too with ASL versus sign exact English. I'm sorry, I don't really know a lot about it because I didn't grow up that way, but um, I mean, but really my opinion, the deaf community, it's really a strong community. We're motivated and we're encouraging. Um, I mean, we're trying to show them, like at least the children, like, and we're trying to show them how to empower themselves and how to be strong and confident in themselves. So, I mean, we're here, so, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so we're just like going back and forth here. Um, okay, one of the, um, just going back for a second to um, cochlear implants, and you said that that had a lot of um, just negative side effects. Um, so do you see that a lot? Um, here at OSU with students who have those. And I, I know this is a variance of my question, but I know that um, after you get a cochlear implant, if, say, technology were to advance, you can't really do anything else. And is that one of the reasons people have problems with it? I don't know if that's a question that makes sense, but it's rambling. <laughs> well, mm, here at OSU, um, I don't really know who has a cochlear, but I mean, I mean, I, you gotta understand they're probably a good person or something. But I mean, um, what was the second question? Can you restate that? Oh, yeah. Do you think that? Um, we'll just. One second. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh no, you're totally fine. The trailer goes down, so it'll be a lot more. Okay. That's what they said. That's okay. Thank you. Um, just as far as different problems that there are with cochlear implants and people you know, is that a reason that people have such depression with it? Or do you think it's because people treat them like they can hear but they can't? Like what are the problems that lead to depression, I guess? Okay, all right, got your question now. I think hearing people think cochlear implants are perfect, they're gonna make them hearing, improve all their hearing capabilities, but really, we've learned that, oh, um, uh, you gotta understand their feelings, and so, and, but they don't, and they never do, because hearing people, what they think when the, technology, it changes everything, so they have to get the, the cochlear. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't help or improve their situation with hearing. Um, the It's hard to find the right words to describe, but I'm trying to think here. I would just say, hearing people don't really understand yet, in general. They just don't understand cochlears. Um, what are, um, okay, what are some ways? Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are some ways that uh, you think the hearing community